Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got banished and got harem with Temari, Hataru and Shizuka. Part 7 If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. In the former land of Yuzushio, Naruto was inside one of the few standing buildings. He had managed to turn that building into his current place of stay while remaining in Yuzushio. He was currently sitting at a table with such high authority figures such as Gara the Kazika Gi, Mei the Mizukagi, Princess Koyuki of the Snow Country, and Shion the Priestess of Oni no Kuni, Demon Country. Naruto had blueprints of building structures he had Tazuna draw up for him, so this is where my office building will be set up, and the Ninja Academy will be right there. Naruto explained to the group. Very thought out plan, Naruto. Gara admitted. Though are you really sure you'll be able to fit all these buildings on this one island? Mei asked in concern. Not to worry, because that's where you come in, Mei. Naruto answered. Me? Yes. I will use my earth jutsu and psychic to rise other pieces of land up from the water and have you use your U-ton element to connect those pieces of land to the island itself, thus increasing the size. Ingenious. Mei admitted. And who is going to occupy this new village you are creating? Cheyenne asked curiously. Well I have met plenty of people over the last three years and most of which said they'd be honored to live with me, he began recalling the Fuma clan, Isuribi, Sarah, Amaru, and even Mingzhu would relocate her into Yuzushio, and last week I went back to Oto to free some of the captives Oro Kamaru had on lockup. Most of which still had their sanity. Whoever didn't have a family I would welcome them to live in my land, at least those I've done a full on thorough investigation on to ensure I don't bring others that are potentially dangerous or have ugly history. It's still surprising that you actually killed Odo's leader, Oro Kamaru. Gara added. The guy had it coming. Naruto replied. What about the Akatsuki organization? Koyuki asked. I'll deal with them when the time is right. He assured her. If you say so, Naruto. Shion said. I'm just glad to have the four of you on my side. I need all the support I can if I'm gonna restore Yuzushio, and hey if the nation gets a bigger reputation than it did back then I could very well earn the title of Kagi. It would take a lot of hard work for not only yourself, but the village as well. Gara reminded his friend. I know. I just wanna keep all possibilities opened. So Naruto, what's next for you? Koyuki asked. Well I plan on visiting Shion here in her own country, but before that I have detour to make. Detour? Mei asked. Yes. There are three bases of Oro Kamaru's I'm going to check out. Each one holds a potential candidate who would provide me with extra strength and knowledge to build up my village. How do you know which places to go and why they would house these individuals? Gara asked. Well while I was scoping out Oro Kamaru's one base I saved multiple documents on the data he's collected over the years about ninja and jutsu. You would be amazed in the types of shinobi he's been keeping captive for so many years. So which shinobi do you have in mind? Mei asked. Well let me see, Naruto pulled out a scroll and started reading, this one here you might know, Mei. Hozuki Suijetsu. Suddenly the Mizu Kagi's eyes widened, him. Her shock caught the attention of the other village or land leaders. Mizu Kagisama, is something wrong? Koyuki asked. Who is this Suijetsu? Gara asked. May calm down and explained, Suijetsu was one of the two Hozuki brothers who are in fact descendants of my village's Naide Mizu Kagi. The two brothers Manjestu and Suijetsu were once trainees with aspirations to become part of Kiri's Seven Swordsmen. Unfortunately only Mangetsu was able to become part of the group, but had a premature death upon joining the group. Suijetsu being torn from what happened to his brother and the disbandment of the last group of seven swordsmen vowed to resurrect the group by collecting the swords themselves and remake a new group of swordsmen with him as leader. So he fled the village years ago and hasn't been heard from. Well Oro Kamaru captured him because of the Hozuki clan's special ability of molding their bodies into liquid and back. With the proper motivation he will be an excellent fighter for my village, and as for reviving the seven swordsmen, 
you said you only recovered the Hiramakarii. Yes. May confirmed. Well I'll see to it he doesn't try to harm Chujuro when it comes time for him to complete the sword set. Who knows maybe Chujuro will want to join Suijetsu's group. So then who are the others you have in mind? Shayan asked. Next is a girl named Karen, Naruto continued, she's a sensory type of shinobi capable of detecting chakra and can hide her own from enemies. Not to mention she has this strange healing ability that can restore someone's chakra by sinking your teeth into her skin. Ouch. May groaned. But that's not my only reason, Naruto continued, Karen is in fact an Uzumaki. The four leaders did a double take, what? Are you sure? Koyuki gasped. Because there have been barely any traces of other Uzumakis throughout the land ever since Yuzushio's destruction. May reminded him. It's all here in Orokamaru's notes. Karen has a powerful life force that grants her immense potential longevity as well as equally strong vitality, and her unique healing ability stems from this powerful life force. The boy explained. So it's true. More Uzumaki still live. May gasped. Yes, and I can't let a living Uzumaki be held up by Orokamaru. Even though according to the record she's proven to be loyal to Orokamaru I think I can convince her to join me. You all know how persuasive I can be. He smirked while Shayan and Koyuki blushed. And who is this third individual? Gara asked. His name is Yugo, and he is the source of Oro Kamaru's cursed markings. What? The four asked. That's right. Yugo also goes by the title Bipolar Yugo. Bipolar? Shayan asked in confusion. Yes. He has an unstable personality. One moment he can calm and docile, and then the next moment a psychopathic killing machine. He was said to have destroyed an entire village while in psycho mode. Whoa! Koyuki gasped. However, he is aware of his destructive urges and hates what he does while in his murderous mode. He spent a lot of time isolating himself in order to keep his bad behavior from hurting others. He was founded by Orokamaru's top fighter Kimamaro Kagaya and was convinced to join Orokamaru in hopes of finding a way to cure his destructive urges. However, Orokamaru was amazed by Yugo's ability to absorb natural energy which allowed him to undergo various drastic physical alterations at the cost of his mentality. Absorb natural energy, but Naruto isn't that like. Shion trailed off. Yes, the same way how I utilize Sage Jutsu, Naruto confirmed, Orokamaru's attempts to discover the origin of this ability led him to the Ryuchi Cave, where he discovered Sage Mode. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't use Sage Mode properly. Instead he created the Curse Seals by combining his Senjutsu Chakra into the mutative enzymes he took from Yugo's blood. So Kimamaro, Sasuke, and the other four. Gara began. Yeah, they each carried a piece of Yugo on him. Naruto nodded. These sound like some serious shinobi you're talking about Naruto, especially this Yugo. Koyuki feared. Are you absolutely sure it would be safe for you to incorporate someone who can't even control his own mad urges? Mei asked. Not to worry I got a secret weapon to help him. Naruto assured. Well Naruto, it's your choice. Gara replied. Arigato for respecting my choice, Gara. Naruto replied. Well I think we can call this meeting adjourned. May declared. Agreed. Gara nodded. Well then allow me to get you four back home in no time, Naruto said as he summoned four clones, each of you take these leaders back to their appropriate home. Hi. They agreed as one clone held Gara up by the arms, while the other three carried Mei, Koyuki, and Shion bridal style. I'll see you soon, Shion. The real Naruto assured her. I'll be waiting. Shion confirmed. So the four clones took off leaving Naruto by himself. He then exited the building through the window and floated, now then, time to get my new band together. He smirked and took off flying. Naruto had been flying across the sea until he reached a rocky island with an abandoned looking compound on it. He landed on the island and started walking toward the compound and entered. As he walked along a hallway, 
it was dark along with numerous tanks set up containing clear water. He then stopped in front of a bigger tank with nothing but water in it. That must be it, Naruto thought before speaking, hello. And suddenly from the giant tank came a voice, hello. Looks like I got some company today. To whom do I owe the pleasure? I'm Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto introduced himself, and you're Suijetsu Hozuki, correct? That's me. What brings you to a place like this, Naruto Uzumaki? The voice continued. You, of course, but let's discuss things face to face. Naruto said as he extended his hands out. Suddenly the glass of the tank started crackling and suddenly shattered making all the water pour out and onto the floor. Emerging from the puddle of water was a boy in the buff who was roughly Naruto's age, with short white hair, violet eyes, and sharp teeth, free at last. Arigato, Naruto. No problem. Now put some clothes on before you make me vomit. Naruto ordered. How did you find this place? Suijetsu questioned him suspiciously. From Oro Kamaru's records. He answered. Oro Kamaru. You've met him. The white haired boy gasped. Plenty of times, and then I killed him. Naruto said bluntly. Suijetsu's eyes widened, you killed him. A likely story. You doubt me? Then perhaps this will change your mind, Naruto said as he concentrated and went into full bijou chakra mode, now what do you have to say? Whoa, this chakra you're emitting it's not human. What are you Naruto Uzumaki? Suijetsu asked as he could feel the chakra emitting from Naruto. I'm a Jinchuriki. He smirked. A Jinchuriki, seriously? That's right, and I happen to be very much in control of my bijou power. I used it in conjuncture with my own power to destroy the one who put you here. Whoa, Suijetsu gasped, so why did you free me? Like I said, put some clothes on then we'll talk. He answered and left Suijetsu to change. Soon Suijetsu was dressed in a purple sleeveless shirt, three brown belts around his torso, waist, and another a bit lower than the waist, and grey pants, and sandals. He was sipping water from a bottle as he and Naruto were sitting outside the compound looking out at the ocean. So why free me, Naruto? The Hozuki boy asked. Because I need your help. My help? Yes. For you see I have a plan, but it would require use of your particular abilities and strength. And what is this plan of yours? He asked. I'm going to restore Yuzushiogakure to its former glory before it was destroyed by paranoid nations. Naruto explained. Yuzushio. So you really are an Uzumaki, aren't you? I am, but I wasn't born in Yuzushio as you can see. I was born somewhere else. Where? Kanahagakure. Kanoha. So you're a shinobi from there? No he answered. No. Suijetsu asked in confusion. I was banished from that village three years ago. What did you do? Suijetsu asked. I did nothing wrong. He answered with bitterness in his tone. Then why banish you if you didn't do anything wrong? Suijetsu asked getting more confused by the second. Naruto sighed, sit down and I'll tell you a little story about how I came to be where I am today. Suijetsu consumed with curiosity sat down. After Naruto explained his life story as brief as possible with the addition of how he acquired his powers, Suijetsu like everyone else Naruto told his story to was left in surprise. You got banished for completing a mission. Hard to believe I understand. Naruto nodded. Jeez, you Kanoha folk are so biased. Suijetsu said as he took a sip of his drink. Well not everybody, Naruto corrected him, mostly the council excluding the Hokage. They made my life hell since birth and finally got rid of me. Hey, I feel your pain, in a sense. Suijetsu replied. I can tell since I read about your own history from Oro Kamara's notes. Naruto explained. So you came here to incorporate me into your village in the making, why? Suijetsu asked. Because we have common cause, he began, you said before you wished to bring forth a new generation of seven swordsmen, but to do that you require the seven swords themselves. 
Naruto pointed out. Yeah. Suijetsu nodded wondering what he was getting at. Well it just so happens one of the active seven swordsmen happens to be my enemy, Kisame Hashigaki. Naruto smiled. Kisame Senpai. Suijetsu gasped. Yes, Naruto said, standing up and looked down on him, join me at my side and we can defeat Kisame and the group he associates with. Then you will be free to bring forth a new generation of swordsmen. What's the catch? Suijetsu questioned him. Simple, you will not harm anyone of Kiri, because I have an alliance made out with their Mizukagi. I know you want to restore the swordsmen, but don't take any frustration you have about what happened to your brother years ago out on the new generation of Kiri, because that was back then and this is now. Suijetsu raised a brow as he took Naruto's words to heart, so Suijetsu, will you join me and abide to my terms? He offered the white-haired boy a hand. Suijetsu looked up at Naruto for a minute before smiling and took his hand, deal. He said as Naruto helped him to his feet. Good, now we have others to recruit. Others? Who? Suijetsu asked curiously. Two more associates of Oro Kamaru's, Karen and Yugo. Suijetsu groaned at their names, those two. Yugo I understand, but Karen? Is that a problem? Naruto asked. I don't get along well with those two, especially Karen. The water boy answered. I'm not asking you to like them. I'm asking you to cooperate with each other. Naruto said. Well all right, but it's only because you freed me. Suijetsu reluctantly answered. Good then shall we head south and collect Karen? Naruto asked. One moment, Naruto, Suijetsu began, before we go there I'd like us to make a quick detour to the wave country. Wave you say? Naruto asked knowing what was coming next. Yes. You said that's where you fought Zabuza Senpai. He asked earning a nod, well I'd like to acquire something of his. Very well, Naruto said as he took hold of Suijetsu's arm, try not to scream or move around too much. Why? Suijetsu asked. This is why. Naruto answered as he started flying upward into the air keeping hold on Suijetsu's arm. Whoa! Suijetsu gasped as he was pulled off the ground, I don't believe this. You really are flying? Yeah. Well time to fly. He took off flying across the sea again with Suijetsu whooping and cheering in excitement. Soon they arrived at their place of destination, which was the land of waves. Naruto always smiled every time he visited the place recalling the first time he came there as a genin. He and Suijetsu stopped and looked up at the title above the bridge reading The Great Naruto Bridge. Great Naruto Bridge? Suijetsu asked and turned to Naruto. What can I say? I was such an inspiration to these people to not cower in fear of their enemies. Naruto shrugged modestly. Well let's go. Suijetsu says as they walked. Naruto was leading the way as they walked through the town that looked big and busy. The little town that was once all gloomy and in ruins was restored. As they walked the boys heard their stomachs growl, man I'm getting hungry. Suijetsu said. Naruto smiled, come on I know a place where we can rest. Then you can get your blade. Where are we going? Suijetsu asked. You'll see. Naruto answered. Soon they stopped in front of a house by the sea, what's this place? Suijetsu asked. Come on. Naruto says as he knocked on the door. Opening the door was Tazuna the bridge builder whom Naruto aided three years ago, Naruto, it's you. He gasped. Hey Tazuna. Naruto greeted. Well nice to see you. Come on in, he showed the two in, why didn't you tell us you were coming? It wasn't exactly planned. Naruto admitted. Regardless, it's always good to see you visit, Tazuna admitted, Hey Tsunami, Inari, look who's here. Coming into the kitchen area was Tazuna's daughter, Tsunami, and grandson, Inari. Inari was older and a bit taller than he was three years ago. Naruto. Tsunami gasped. Naruto and I. Inari cheered. Hey guys. He greeted them. 
Inari spotted Suijetsu who stood casually next to Naruto, hey who's he? A new friend of mine, Naruto answered and introduced him, this is Suijetsu Hozuki. Nice to meet you kid. Tezuna greeted him. Any friend of Naruto's is welcomed here. Tsunami smiled. Thanks ma'am. Suijetsu answered. This is Tezuna, the one who built the bridge and this is his family, daughter Tsunami, and grandson Inari. Naruto introduced them. A pleasure. Suijetsu replied. You boys look hungry, so how about I fix us all some lunch? Tsunami offered. Sounds good to me. Naruto admitted. Me too. Suijetsu agreed. Soon the five of them were seated at the table enjoying a nice home-cooked meal, especially Suijetsu, Sugoi. He and Naruto smiled with lit up eyes. You two must have been hungry. Tsunami giggled. Ma'am, you have no idea. Suijetsu answered while the three family members looked confused but dismissed it. Well eat up there's plenty for everyone. Tsunami said as they continued eating. So Naruto, are you satisfied with the structural layout of the buildings I had designed? Tezuna asked. Very much so Tezuna, he admitted, so when can your men begin working? We can begin ASAP, as soon as you give us the go. Tezuna admitted. Good because it will be time soon enough. Naruto admitted. After lunch, Naruto checked the time, whoop, sorry to eat and run, but we gotta go. So soon. Tsunami asks. Yeah I know, but when you're trying to make plans to build your own village you gotta be ready, Naruto reminded them as he and Suijetsu got up. Thanks again for the food. They said while heading out. Soon Naruto led Suijetsu to the memorial where Zabuza's weapon was, well there it is. Naruto motioned to the memorial and the sword still stuck in the ground in front of it. Zabuza's sword was covered in leaves and such from not being moved in so many years. Wonderful. Suijetsu cheered as he grabbed the hilt, sorry Zabuza senpai but I will be taking this. Suddenly his arm grew big and muscular and was able to pick the weapon up with ease. You sure you're actually capable of wielding it? Naruto asked him. I told you didn't I? Suijetsu asked, the blades of the seven swordsmen are passed on from one generation to another. I trained like crazy hoping to one day become one, he explained, besides, if Yugo's going to be joining us, I'll need this for insurance. I don't think you'll have to worry about that. Naruto replied. What do you mean? Suijetsu asked as he strapped the sword to his back and detached the hilt of the blade and strapped it to the side of his belt. Alright I got what I needed, now I'm ready to join. Good. Naruto said as he flew behind Suijetsu and picked him up by the arms carrying him off while heading south. Tell me again why you're recruiting Karen. She is a complete bitch. Maybe I don't know her like you do, but she is an Uzumaki, and I'll be damned if I just let another Uzumaki out there alone, Naruto explained, after all Orokamaru is dead now. So she doesn't have to continue her job as a security guard. Well unlike me, she's actually dedicated to the guy even in death. Suijetsu warned him. Don't worry Suijetsu, I'll manage. Naruto assured him as he looked ahead seeing another island with a rock formation. Meanwhile inside the compound, Sitting at a desk was a girl with red eyes covered by brown glasses, and red hair that was short and unkempt on her right side, while long and combed on her left. She was wearing long black thigh high stocking sandals, short black shorts, and a lavender split zippered shirt. She sat looking bored until she felt something and lifted her head up, the feeling of this chakra. It's so warm and welcoming, and yet similar to mine. She gasped. Naruto and Suijetsu landed outside the island compound and approached the huge metal gates, could you knock? Naruto asked Suijetsu motioning to his sword. Why can't you just use your power to pry the doors open? Suijetsu asked. I could, but I'd end up leaving a bigger mess. Naruto answered. All right. Suijetsu sighed feeling this was a waste of using his weapon, but grabbed the detachable hilt and connected it to his sword. He sliced the doors in half giving them an entry. 
They walked inside and down corridors that were loaded with prison cells, and several inmates were lying around bored out of their wits, while some just glanced at Naruto and Suijetsu passing by. The two continued walking until they stopped seeing the girl that sensed Naruto earlier on, well who do we have here? She asked rudely while placing her hands on her hips. Karen, I presume? Naruto asked. Yeah, so what? She asked. My name is Naruto, and I've come looking for you. He answered. For me. You're quite bold to come here alone. She sneered. Hey I'm here too. Suijetsu said feeling insulted that he wasn't noticed. Karen just glanced at him without saying a word before turning back to Naruto, so what do you want? A moment of your time. The redhead boy answered. Well can't you see I'm busy here? She asked. You don't look all that busy. Suijetsu snarked. Shut up. Karen scolded. Okay you two that's enough, Naruto ordered, Suijetsu we didn't come here for a fight. I've come here, Karen because I need your help. My help? Yes, for I happen to know who you really are. Who I really am? Karen asked feeling weirded out. Yes. You are of the Uzumaki clan. Naruto declared making Karen jump in fright. How how do you know that? Because Karen, I am also an Uzumaki. Naruto explained. You're what? Karen gasped. I know you know, you can feel and sense chakra. You know I'm telling the truth. Naruto challenged her. Karen froze there as she could not deny the feeling of Naruto's chakra similar to her own, you. You are an Uzumaki. Naruto nodded, mm hmm. I thought I was the only member of the Uzumaki clan left. So did I, Naruto admitted. So does this mean we're cousins or something? Well since we don't know the full family tree let's go with that. Naruto suggested. So why else did you come here, and with that guy? Karen motioned to Suijetsu. I have a name you know. Suijetsu gritted his teeth. Let's go someplace to talk about this. Naruto suggested. Karen just showed the two to a private room and the three were sitting down while Suijetsu drank from his bottled water. So what's up? Karen asked. First off I want to know how an Uzumaki clan member like you came to be under the order of Orokamaru. Naruto began. Karen sighed, well in many ways it's all I've ever known, she began, at a young age, I lived in a small village that was burnt to the ground during a war. I was the only survivor and was completely unharmed. Oro Kamaru found me in the aftermath and asked how I survived. I told him that I could tell that huge groups of people were coming. He took a very good interest in my sensory skill as well as my healing ability and brought me under his charge to experiment on my ability. Eventually he gave me the position as jail guard at this base, even though he only came here once in a while. So you did all this for Oro Kamaru because you felt you owed him for taking you in? Naruto asked. Well that and I had nothing else going on for me. She admitted. That's for sure. Suijetsu answered. Karen frowned while glaring daggers at him, well Karen today is your lucky day, because I'm relieving you of your watch duty here. Relieving me? She asked. That's right, because Oro Kamaru's dead and word of that travels fast. And get this, Karen, Suijetsu got her attention, Naruto's the one who killed him. Karen did a double take and stammered at Naruto, what? Huh? You, you killed Oro Kamaru? I felt the same way, but it's true. It was him. Suijetsu answered. Why would you kill Oro Kamaru? Karen asked. You're being rhetorical right? Suijetsu asked only to get ignored. The thing is Karen, Oro Kamaru was one of the guys who costed me my old home. Naruto explained. He what? Karen asked. Karen, get ready for a long and complicated story. Suijetsu warned her. Karen sighed and reluctantly listened as Naruto told her exactly what he told Suijetsu. When he was finished Karen was shocked and surprised at what Naruto told her, especially the parts about Oro Kamaru and his psychic power. 
So that's it? She asked. Yeah. He nodded. I never would have guessed. No one would have. He assured her. So now you want me to leave this place and come with you to restore Yuzushio? That's right. Come with me, Karen. Being the only known survivors of the Uzumaki clan we know gives us both an opportunity to restore our clan in our own ways. But what about all the prisoners here? She asked. Naruto turned to the swordsman, Suijetsu, go free them. All right, I'm going. Suijetsu said as he left the room. Don't even think about it. Karen shouted to the swordsman. Karen there's no point in keeping them here until they die, Naruto said while kicking back, they're free just like you are. But if you really don't want to, I could always find someone else in Orokamaru's ranks to replace you. Naruto said in disappointment. Karen quickly ran to the door and locked it, Karen, why'd you lock the door? Naruto asked. Karen stood moving her foot in a circular motion on the ground while acting like a shy violet, well if you really want me to come. I guess I could. That's a quick change of thought, Karen. Naruto said while confused at her change in behavior almost like she was acting like Hinata. I just realized I am tired of standing guard for someone who's dead, Karen started, and you're right. I should get out and enjoy life. Suddenly there was pounding on the door, hey open this door. Damn you Karen, I knew you'd pull this stunt as soon as I walked out. Suijetsu yelled from outside. Karen ignored his shouts and spoke to Naruto, why don't we leave that stupid Suijetsu behind? You don't need someone like him. I've made up my mind about keeping Suijetsu, Karen. Naruto answered. Suddenly the door crashed down, making Karen jump. Suijetsu stood in the destroyed doorway with a buffed up arm and his sword stuck to the ground, come on Naruto let's blow this place. Apparently Karen is not interested. Actually Suijetsu, she said she changed her mind. Naruto smirked. Karen looked outraged, whoa hold on. I never actually said I'd be. Too late Karen, I heard you. Naruto replied. Karen sighed, alright I'll come. Suijetsu smirked as his arm returns to normal, so now we're going for Yugo, right? Karen gasped, Yugo, he's coming too. Yes, so come on you too. Let's go while we're still young. Naruto said walking out. Suijetsu watched him walk ahead, ninja with an attitude. He and Karen followed and caught up to him. The three stood outside as Naruto summoned a single clone that flew up behind Suijetsu holding his arms, while the real Naruto held on to Karen's, don't scream Karen, and don't struggle. You're in good hands. What are you doing? She asked cautiously. We're traveling to the north hideout my way. He smirked as he and his clone lifted the two off the ground. Whoa. Karen gasped as her feet were off the ground. He said don't struggle. Suijetsu lectured her as she glared at him. Okay you two, here we go. Naruto called as the two Naruto's took off flying while Karen screamed. Soon as they were getting closer and closer to Orokamaru's northern hideout, Karen who stopped screaming spoke to Naruto, you realize going to the north hideout is suicide don't you? It's where Orokamaru did most of his human experiments, with Yugo being his most favorite test subject. Not to worry Karen, I have a plan. Naruto assured her. What plan? She asked. Simple. I'm going to cure Yugo. Get real man. If Orokamaru couldn't do it, what makes you so sure you can? Suijetsu asked. Orokamaru only used him to create those cursed markings that plagued ninjas, Naruto says remembering Jirobo, Tayuya, Kadamaru, Sakan, Kimamaro, and Sasuke. He built that place only to house him and his destructive behavior. That's not the kind of cure you do for a guy. Hey we're here. Karen pointed to the island ahead. Good, Naruto smirked as they landed with Naruto dispelling his one clone, let's go. They started walking until they reached the entry. Naruto using psychic pride the doors opened allowing them entry. As they wandered the compound, they saw numerous corpses lying around with blood everywhere, looks like a riot broke out. 
Suijetsu said. Suddenly Karen froze and shivered, Yugo's close. I can feel him. They headed down the corridors looking, until they stopped at the corner of a hall and looked up ahead seeing a guy wearing grey shorts and a shirt like the other jailers. He had orange spiky hair and half of his skin was white while one half was dark and demonic signaling he looked like he was in a cursed seal level 1 form. It's Yugo, Karen gasped as she kept her distance. Naruto started walking forward with no sense of fear, Naruto, you're walking to your death. She cried. Well it was nice knowing him. Suijetsu said to himself making Karen frown. The half-demonic looking man known as Yugo saw Naruto approaching him, another man to kill. He shouted charging for Naruto who wasn't even flinching or stopping as Yugo rushed for him. Somebody do something. Karen cried. Suijetsu wanting to shut her up went forward and blocked a blow from Yugo using his sword while Naruto stood in the middle, hey Yugo, working out huh? Suijetsu asked. Yugo looked at him, I remember you. You're Suijetsu. He and the swordsman engaged in fighting until Naruto frowned and used his psychic send Yugo flying to the wall at the end of the hall pinning him to it. Wow, he's good. Suijetsu said. That's cool. Karen gasped in amaze. Naruto floated over to the crazy man, getting into his face, Yugo, calm down. I only want to help you. Help me. Yugo asked as he started looking less crazy in the face. Yes, now hold still, Naruto instructed as he pulled out a sealing patch and placed it on Yugo's forehead followed by forming some hand signs, Fuenjutsu, Sehantai Fujin, Bipolar Seal. He shouted as the charm glowed and the seal symbol was embedded into Yugo's forehead and he returned to full human form and Naruto released him from the wall. Whoa! Suijetsu gasped as he and Karen watched in wonder. Yugo straightened himself up and realized he was okay, I feel okay. Yugo gasped. I've used a special seal to correct your destructive nature, you should be able to control the curse change at will now without losing your sanity. Naruto explained to the guy. Who are you? He asked. My name's Naruto and I've come for you Yugo. For me? Yes. I need your help. My help? Yugo raised a brow in curiosity. Yeah, he's got really big plans in mind for us. Suijetsu explained as he and Karen approach. Suijetsu and Karen. What are you two doing here? We came here with Naruto. Karen explained. Walk with me Yugo, there's a lot I have to fill you in on. Naruto said as they started walking. Naruto, what do we do about all the prisoners here? Suijetsu asked. They all have unstable cursed markings on them. They're doomed already. Naruto answered as they continued on for the exit. As they left the building, Naruto explained everything to Yugo about where he came from and why he came to him. So now you want me to join your future village? Yugo asked. Yes Yugo. You will find a better life there than you could ever imagine. That I promise you. Naruto promised. Yugo looked at Suijetsu who smiled and Karen who nodded in confirmation. Yugo looked at Naruto with a smile, for curing me of my insanity, I will join you. Excellent choice, Naruto smiled as he looked at the three, from this moment on you three will be my new team. Once I get my village going we will start taking up missions from other villages and earn a place as a ninja land. And who knows we may even end up making the Yuzushio on par with the five great nations themselves. You think so? Yugo asked. Anything's possible if we all do our part. Naruto answered. Well I'm in. Suijetsu said. Why not? Karen agreed. Certainly. Yugo finished. Great, Naruto smiled at their answers, but Yugo, I think it's best for us and yourself that we get you some new clothes. And a bath to boot. Karen gagged from the stench he was emitting. So what do you have in mind? Yugo asked. I know just the person to help us. Naruto smirked. Yugo raised a brow in curiosity while Suijetsu and Karen were as confused as well. 
Sometime later they were standing outside a spa and boutique shop in a town located in Kusa. Misa Mikigami's spa and boutique? Karen asked. Yeah, Misa's a natural when it comes to prepping both men and women up. She'll have Yugo looking good in no time. Naruto assured as they entered the place. When they entered the shop, Suijetsu looked around seeing the place loaded with fashion dummies wearing clothes, a spa section, and a hair salon section, wow, this place looks really posh. Probably reflects the owner's personality. He said feeling uneasy. Misa. Naruto called. Coming, a voice answered as a tall 19-year-old girl entered the room. She had blue eyes and long, straight and shiny purple hair along with a triangular fringe at the front that barely touches the ridge of her nose and supported an 87 centimeters bust. She wore sandals, long aqua blue pants, and a no-sleeved white shirt, welcome to Misa Mikigami's spa and boutique. How may I help? Naruto. She gasped. How's it going, Misa? He asked. Naruto, how wonderful to see you. Misa cheered as she went over and embraced the boy who returned the gesture confusing the three recruits, I'm sorry but I don't seem to have you down for any appointment. It's not about me this time, Misa. It's about him. Naruto motioned to Yugo making Misa gasp in shock. Oh my stars, darling. Where did you come from? She inspected Yugo's state of attire and appearance. You don't want to know. Suijetsu answered. Misa let me introduce to you some friends of mine, Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo. Guys this is Misa Mikigami, owner of this shop. It's a pleasure sirs and ma'am. Misa bowed her head. We came here and hope you could help Yugo here, he's desperately in need of a makeover if you will put it that way. Naruto explained. Obviously. Misa said as she could smell the sweat and muck off Yugo. So can you help him? Naruto asked hopefully. Now before I make my decision I must do some routine inspections, Misa began as she circled Yugo and started taking height and weight measurements to determine what size he is, hmm. Well Misa, what's the verdict? Naruto asked while Karen and Suijetsu were concerned as well. I love a challenge, I'll do it. She declared. Yes. Naruto pumped a fist. And as per bonus, I shall offer the three of you a complimentary treatment as well. I'm sold. Karen said liking the idea. You're not gonna pretty frilly me up are you? Suijetsu asked cautiously. Relax Suijetsu, the workers here are naturals. Naruto assured him. Well then, time to get to work. Misa said as she clapped her hands a few times resulting in several female workers entering the room, girls get to work on these three if you please. Yes, Ms. Mikigami. They answered. Now Mr. Yugo, come with me this way. She showed him off. Soon Naruto and Suijetsu were sitting on hairdressing chairs as two workers were working on their sideburns and back sides of their hair, while Karen was getting her nails and hair done. Oh yes. This is paradise. Karen relaxed in delight from the treatment. So how'd you find this place, Naruto? Suijetsu asked. I was taking a break in Kusa months ago, and stumbled upon this place. I got me a good haircut and Misa and I got to really know each other. He explained. Hope she knows what she's doing with Yugo. Karen said. Trust me, Yugo's in the best of care. Naruto assured her. In another room, Yugo was sitting in a bath filled with bubbles. He relaxed in it as Misa was running shampoo through his hair, so where exactly did you come from, Yugo? Well I've been living under harsh conditions for years, hence why I looked like this, he explained and not wanting to tell her he was a psychopath locked in a prison, then Naruto found me and helped me back on my feet. Yes, Naruto is such a charming young man isn't he? She asked. Well he's sure a nice guy. Yugo admitted. You Yugo couldn't have found a more perfect friend. She explained. Soon Yugo was brought out of the tub and was getting dried off before being brought over before a mirror where Misa gave him a quick trim. Soon Naruto, Suijetsu, and Karen were finished with their treatment and awaited for Misa to return with Yugo. 
They saw Misa exit the one room as Naruto spoke, well Misa how'd it go? Misa smiled, I'm proud to say it was a huge success. She then stepped aside as Yugo walked out looking completely refreshed and with a whole new wardrobe. Replacing his jailer attire was a pair or sandals, long brown pants, and a purple shirt. Naruto, Suijetsu, and Karen applauded on Misa's success and Yugo's new look, outstanding. Naruto complimented with a victory whistle. Not bad, Yugo. Suijetsu crossed his arms. It's definitely you. Karen admitted. Thanks guys, and thank you Ms. Mikigami. Yugo thanked her. Oh please, call me Misa. She smiled. Here's a little something for what you did for Yugo. Naruto slipped her some money. Arigato, Naruto, you and your friends come back again whenever you need a good treatment. Misa said. Will do. Naruto nodded as the four left the shop. That was just what I needed. Karen stretched her arms up. After being locked in a tank for so long, that did feel good. Suijetsu admitted. So Naruto, where to now? Yugo asked. Naruto smiled, well guys, our next stop is a visit to Oni no Kuni. What are we going to find there? Suijetsu asked. I'm gonna introduce you three to someone very special to me. Naruto explained as he used his levitation to lift the three off the ground with him, let's ride. He called as he flew them off with him. Naruto was flying himself and his three new partners over the ocean. Suijetsu and Yugo were cheering in excitement while Karen was tense in fear of falling from so high up. So tell us about this special someone you're taking us to see, Naruto. Suijetsu said. Well she's a very important person in her land. Naruto began as Suijetsu started guessing. A princess? No he answered. A queen? No. Uh. Suijetsu was cut off by Karen, Damn it! Suijetsu shut the hell up and let Naruto explain. Arigato, Karen, Naruto said and continued, her name is Shion and she's the priestess of Oni no Kuni. Priestess? Yugo asked. That's right. The shrine maiden Shion, and you know her? Karen asked. Yeah, we have quite a history. He admitted proudly. What kind of history? Suijetsu asked feeling interested. History that's for later. Right now we're almost there. Naruto said as they approached a piece of land. When they reached the island, Naruto touched himself and his cohorts onto the land safely, that was quite a flight. Yugo admitted. Hopefully we won't have to be doing it any time soon. Karen said in trauma. What's the matter? Can't handle it. Suijetsu teased. Karen frowned and punched Suijetsu in the face making his head pop into water. Suijetsu's head reformed good as new, will you stop hitting me? Alright you two knock it off. Naruto ordered them and took off with the three following. They walked through the town of the land, while noticing multiple people were giving Naruto looks of surprise. Every once in a while Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo would hear the villagers gossiping amongst each other about recognizing Naruto. Wow you must have quite a reputation here, Naruto. Suijetsu noted. Well it's only natural for saving the life of their land's shrine maiden. Naruto admitted. You saved her? Yugo asked. Yeah, and since then she and I have been great friends and associates. She's agreed to help me restore Yuzushio using whatever she can in her power and authority, Naruto explained as they continued down a path leading up to a castle, well this is the place. The four approached the gate seeing a guard stationed outside, halt. State your business. He ordered. Relax Minaka, it's me. Naruto showed him his pass for the country issued by Shion. Oh, Naruto. Welcome. Lady Shion's been expecting your arrival. The guard greeted him. Well I didn't want to keep her waiting any longer, he said making conversation with the guard and motion to his friends, these three are my guests. Welcome travelers to the demon country. Lady Shion will see you now. Minaka said as they started walking past the open gates and were escorted to the throne where Shion sat. 
Shayan. I'm here. Naruto called. Shayan looked up seeing Naruto standing in the entrance, Naruto. She cried as she got off her throne and ran towards Naruto, jumping into his arms and kissed him which he graciously returned. The three others stood there in surprise with Suijetsu giving off wolf whistles. When the two parted they looked into each other's eyes smiling, I'm so glad you made it. Shayan said. Wouldn't have missed it, he began and noticed Shayan eyeing the three other arrivals standing behind them, oh that's right. Shayan allow me to introduce to you my three new friends. The one with the sword is Suijetsu Hozuki, the redhead is my cousin Karen, and the big guy is Yugo. Guys this is Shayan the shrine maiden of the land. The three bowed their heads out of respect and spoke, we thank you for having us. Shayan smiled, it's okay. Any friend of Naruto's is welcomed here. Now then, you all must be hungry after your long fly here. So please I would be honored if the four of you would join me for dinner. You had me at, hungry. Suijetsu answered. I would like that. Karen admitted. Me too. Yugo nodded. Splendid, and before dinner you may all wash up in my castle's indoor bath. Shayan added. Ooh, I can't wait. Karen said in excitement. Soon enough in the priestess indoor bathhouse, Naruto, Yugo, and Suijetsu were on one side relaxing, while Shayan and Karen were on the other side. Suijetsu was kicking back and spoke, oh yeah. This is just what I needed after being contained for so many years. It's like all my troubles are being lifted away. Yugo admitted as he sunk himself into the bath till he was up to his neck in water. You said it. Naruto said as he rested his arms on the ledge. On the other side Karen was squealing in delight as she rested her body in the bath, oh this feels so heavenly. Arigato Shayansama. You're very welcome, Karen. So how is it you know, Naruto? The redhead asked curiously. Well this was three years ago actually, Shayan began, back then I wasn't as generous as I have been to you all moments ago. I was in fact a royal bitch. Pardon my language. No worries. Karen replied. Anyway. I've always had this special power of sealing and the ability to foresee people's deaths. Yikes. Shayan nodded, at a young age I lived with my mother, the former priestess of the land, but one day she was offered up in a ceremonial sacrifice and I was left alone. Because of my power of foreseeing death I was shunned by people and their children, and without my mother there for me I barely had anyone to turn to. I grew up hating my power and felt that death was inevitable to those I would foresee the deaths of. Why would your mom be sacrificed? Karen asked. Well for many years this land has been the sealment of a demon known as Muryu. One of his top generals sought to release him, and had to kill me, the one person capable of stopping the demon's release. My family had been a long line of priestess whose mission was to keep Muryu from escaping. When I first met Naruto I foresaw his death from being stabbed through the heart. When we went to stop Muryu, I saw my prediction about his death was about to happen. Instead I intervened and was ready to use my power to kill both Muryu and myself to save Naruto. However, Naruto himself stepped in and stopped me convincing me that I didn't want to die either. We ended up working together to defeat Muryu. I was able to awaken my true powers and enhanced Naruto's jutsu with my chakra and we destroyed Muryu, I went back and corrected the story on how it happened in the one chapter as well. Wow. Karen gasped while on the other side, Naruto was telling Suijetsu and Yugo the exact same story from his POV. Oh man that must have been some action. Suijetsu chuckled. You two really prevented what could have been the end of the world. Yugo noted. Yeah, and I'd do it again a hundred times more. It was that exciting. Naruto admitted. So then what happened with you two afterwards? Suijetsu asked Naruto before it cut back to the girls with Shayan answering the same question asked by Karen. Well I mentioned to Naruto that my power was needed to be passed on to the next generation of priestess. I asked him if he wanted to help me with that, and he graciously accepted without a second thought. What? Karen and the boys shouted in response to both Shayan and Naruto who told them the same answer. 
So Ijetsu spoke to Naruto, you agreed to father her offspring? Yup. Naruto nodded with no sense of guilt. She must have really been into you, Naruto. Yugo said. Shion then spoke to Karen her reason for requesting Naruto to be the one, Naruto was a good person. Even when I kept telling him he was going to die, he kept rebuffing my warnings claiming that he follows his own path and would not die so easily. When I was being targeted by Muryu's other followers Naruto promised he would protect me and wouldn't let them kill me. I started developing admiration for him and his determination, and soon that admiration started growing into love. I see. Karen replied. I could ask no better of a man than to be the father of my future children. Cheyenne finished. Well you could have asked worse to fill that position. Karen said as she thought of Suijetsu. So Karen, is there anybody in your life you're after? Cheyenne asked. Karen did a double take, what? What brought this on? Well I'm just curious. After all a young girl like yourself looks too good to be single. The priestess explained making the redhead blush. Well I'm not looking for anybody this soon, besides I don't know too many guys. She admitted. Well I hope you find someone out there deserving of you. Cheyenne smiled. Yeah, so do I, Karen replied. After enough soaking and getting cleaned up, Naruto, Shion, Suijetsu, Yugo, and Karen were sitting at a large table filled with a wide spread of food. Shion and Karen ate peacefully while Naruto, Suijetsu, and Yugo were stuffing themselves. You boys have quite the appetite. Shion noted about Suijetsu and Yugo since she already knew of Naruto's large appetite. It's been so long since I've had such a good meal as this. Yugo explained. Yeah me too. Suijetsu agreed. Well eat up. There's more than plenty for all. Shion assured them. Sweet. Suijetsu said as he continued eating. So Naruto has recruited you three to help build up the strength of his soon-to-be-restored village. Shion asked recalling that Naruto told her, May, and Gara of his plan to recruit the three former followers of Oro Kamaru. Yeah that's right. We were all left to rot in those bases even before Oro Kamaru died. Suijetsu said. Then Naruto came and offered the three of us another chance at life. Yugo added. And if we succeed in restoring Yuzushio we'll be a force to be reckoned with. Karen put in. And I shall provide what service I can to see that it happens. Shion assured. Thanks again, Shion. You really are amazing. Naruto smiled and she blushed. You're welcome, Naruto. Before you turn in tonight I would request you meet me in my chamber to discuss more plans for Yuzushio. She explained while Naruto could see right through the facade and nodded. I understand. That night, Karen, Yugo, and Suijetsu were given guest rooms to sleep in while Naruto made his way to Shion's private chamber. He took a deep breath and knocked on the door, Shion. It's Naruto. Enter. Shion's voice came from inside the room. Naruto opened the door and stepped inside Shion's beautiful and luxurious room that looked made for royalty. He looked and saw Shion standing before the king-sized bed wearing a white robe that clung to her body. Evening Shion. Naruto greeted her while he felt mesmerized by her state of attire. I'm glad you saw through my deeper meaning behind meeting me in here. Shion said. This is me you're talking to, Shion. He reminded her. She smiled, I know, Naruto approached her and stood in front of her, now be a sweetheart and undress me. Of course. Naruto said as he reached down and undid the sash of her robe. With her robe loosened up, Naruto slipped it off her shoulders and it fell to the floor. Shion stood before Naruto completely naked for his eyes to see. Naruto eyed her from bottom to top entranced by her soft-looking skin and her busty and bouncy breasts that just popped right out. If you keep staring at me like that I'm going to blush. Shion said as she started blushing from him eyeballing her up. Good. You look cuter when you blush. He answered and wrapped his arms around her pulling her into a tight embrace. Shion gasped but smirked while blushing as she could feel their bodies press into each other, 
ah I can already feel those soft voluptuous breasts pressing into me. He thought in arousal. You're as bad as your former sensei you know that. Kurama thought. I'm too preoccupied to even make a comeback. He thought back. Naruto then looked Shion in the eye and leaned forward as they kissed with Naruto stroking her long bleach blonde hair, oh no matter how many times I do this with Naruto it never gets old. Shion thought. When they broke their kiss, Naruto levitate Shion off the floor and she floated back to her bed before being lowered gently onto the mattress, now sit back while I change into something more comfortable. Naruto smirked as he started stripping down in front of her while doing an erotic dance. As Shion watched she could feed herself get wet below from the arousing sight. When Naruto was stark naked he levitated himself off the floor and floated over to the bed, landing at Shion's side, hope my crew doesn't come looking for me in here. Otherwise it'd be a hell of an awkward situation. Naruto joked. Don't worry I have guards around the halls to make sure they don't try coming in here. Shion assured him. That's my clever little priestess, Naruto said as he ruffled her hair making her giggle, now then, shall we begin? Yes please. She answered and suddenly Naruto got in front of her and laid her down flat on the bed. Lemon happened. Sex in mid-air. Only Naruto would be able to do something like this. Shion thought as she enjoyed the pleasure. Their heated pleasure continued for an hour and a half. Soon Naruto and Shion were under the covers with Shion draping herself over Naruto's sleeping body as they slept peacefully. The very next morning, Naruto, Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo after having breakfast were outside the shrine maiden's home as they were prepared to leave, must you go so soon? Shion asked. Afraid so, Shion, Naruto admitted regretfully, we still got others to talk to in preparation for Yuzushio's restoration. I understand. Shion nodded. But we'll be back, just you wait. Naruto assured her. I'll hold you to it. And if he forgets we'll remind him. Suijetsu smirked. Well catch you later. Naruto said as he flew him and his new team off leaving Shion to wave goodbye at her departing friends. As they flew across the ocean Yugo spoke, so Naruto, where are we going now? Next stop is the sea country. I'm gonna introduce to you a friend of mine named Isoribi. Naruto began until suddenly his eyes widened making the three curious. Naruto are you okay? Suijetsu asked. Naruto. Speak to us. Karen said as he stopped flying and they hovered in mid-air. As it turned out, Naruto was getting another premonition. This time he was seeing his Kumo friend and fellow Jinchuriki Yujido running through some sort of dark tunnel passing a sign labeled Kabari Mines. He saw her finally come to a halt as he saw who she was running from. It was in fact two members of the Akatsuki. One of them he recognized from Takigekyo's history book shown by Shibuki was Kakuzu. The second was a man with white hair that was slicked back and in his hand was a red three-bladed scythe. Suddenly he snapped out of his stupor and gasped, oh no. Yujito. What? Yujito. Suijetsu asked in confusion as Naruto suddenly flew them off again only going faster than before. Naruto what's the rush? Karen asked while trying to keep herself from vomiting. Is something wrong? Yugo asked. No time to explain guys. One of my other friends is in trouble. Naruto answered as he flew faster and faster, hang on Yujito I'm coming. I won't let you suffer the same fate as Gara did. He thought in determination to not fail like he did before. Naruto had just crossed close to the land of lightning where the Kabari mines were located. He landed them and started running into the mines with his team following him. Naruto wait. Karen called as they chased after him. What's going on? Suijetsu asked while panting. Why did you fly us out here so fast? Yugo asked. One of my friends is in trouble, and I can't let her get captured. Naruto answered as he ran down the tunnel he committed to memory from his premonition of where Yujito was running. Her. Karen asked seeing a girl was involved. Captured. Suijetsu asked in confusion. 
Yes, I saw members of the Akatsuki going after a fellow Jinchuriki and friend of mine. I let Gara die, but I won't let another die. He shouted as he ran faster and faster while the three were trying to keep up. He's nuts. Karen cried to her team. He's determined. Yugo said in admiration. Naruto looked ahead and heard some explosions knowing he was close, almost there. He shouted as they reached a giant cavern in the mines and looked down seeing Yujito in her chakra cloak state and the two Akatsuki members attacking her. Whoa, look at them. Suijetsu gasped. Are they Akatsuki? Yugo asked. Yeah. That one with the Taki headband is Kakuzu I learned about him from Taki's current leader and that one with the Yugikure headband I recognize from the Bing book is Haydn. Both of them can be dangerous, fortunately I'm just as dangerous. He smirked as he summoned an armada of shadow clones that concentrated and went sage mode. Whoa. The three gasped. Okay boys, let's get to work. He ordered as they all concentrated chakra into their palms and were holding up giant sage chakra powered raisingans. They then jumped from the cliff and started flying downward aiming their jutsus at the Akatsuki members. The two members feeling the heavy chakra in the air looked up seeing the multiple giant spheres of chakra coming down on them, Senpu, Cho Udama Rasen Terengan, Sage Art, Ultra Big Ball Spiral Multispheres. They shouted. Run! The Akatsuki member known as Haydn screamed as they started running all over the place as the Jutsus collided with the ground. Yujito jumped aside to avoid the giant impact. Suddenly the clones dispelled as Naruto touched down beside Yujito giving her a lady killer smirk, miss me? Yujito could only blush but spoke, well a few minutes earlier would have been comforting. Better late than never. He countered until the smoke from the impact with the ground cleared and they saw the two Akatsuki members lying on the ground with their cloaks shredded. Don't think they'll be getting up anytime soon. Yujito said. Don't be so sure. Naruto replied with a scowl as they saw the two members rise to their feet looking beaten. What? Yujito gasped. Oh damn it. What the hell was that? Haydn cursed. An ambush, Kakuzu said as he clutched his back revealing four spots with two containing masks while the other two looked blank as if something was cracked off, that attack took my doton heart and my katan heart. What the hell are you? Haydn demanded as he stared Naruto down. Someone who you don't want to piss off, but you already did. Naruto frowned. Wait a minute. Haydn doesn't he look familiar? Kakuzu asked his partner. What are you talking about, Kakuzu? I've never seen this brat before in my life. Haydn replied. Don't you remember what Itachi and Kisame said? The nuke mean from Taki reminded him. Haydn looked back and suddenly recalled what the two said at their previous meetings, this boy. He's the one who houses the Kyubi. So it appears. Kakuzu said. You Akatsuki think you'll collect all the tailed beasts? Well I'm not gonna let that happen. Naruto growled and gave a signal up above. The two looked up as Suijetsu carrying his sword was about to chop them, but they jumped out of the way avoiding what would have been a lethal split. Damn it I missed. Suijetsu groaned as Yugo jumped down with Karen in his arms and set her back on her feet. What's this, who are they? Haydn asked in confusion. Itachi and Kisame didn't say anything about these three. Kakuzu said feeling unprepared. So what are we up against? Yugo asked Naruto. Kakuzu is a ninja capable of using all of the chakra elements because of his forbidden jutsu that takes a ninja's heart and their chakra elements, Naruto began, of course since I just crushed two of his hearts with my barrage of raisingans he only has three now. Haydn can down a victim's blood and by inflicting pain on himself can also do the same to the victim whose blood he downed. I'll handle him. Suijetsu offered as he stared Haydn down as the Akatsuki member drew a red three-bladed scythe. Then the rest of us will handle Kakuzu, Naruto replied and turned to Yujito, you up for it Yujito? Of course I am. She answered as her nails grew longer. Then let's go. Naruto called as he took off with Yujito and Yugo who went full cursed seal form to fight, 
only this time Yugo was in control of his monstrous form. Suijetsu and Haydn were clashing with their weapons as Suijetsu spoke, don't underestimate someone who trained to be a member of the Seven Swordsmen. Seven Swordsmen. Oh not that crap again. Haydn groaned. Crap. The Seven Swordsmen were not crap. Suijetsu shouted as he started fighting back harder with his sword. Haydn kept deflecting the blows as best he could until he found an opening, hope your blood is tasty. He swiped his scythe at Suijetsu's side hoping to draw some blood but to his shock saw water splatter onto the ground, what? Surprise! Suijetsu called as he used his bloodline to increase his muscle size in his arms and grabbed the scythe breaking it apart, what do you have to say to that? What the hell are you? Haydn shouted. I'm a Hozuki. Suijetsu called as he started twirling his sword around and in a matter of moments Haydn was cut to pieces. God damn it. Haydn cursed as his head had been decapitated from his neck. Whoa shit. Suijetsu gasped, Naruto he's still breathing. He called to Naruto who was busy dodging lightning attacks from Kakuzu. Don't worry as long as he can't move he's harmless. Naruto called as he flew around. Itachi, Kisame, and Deidara were right about him. Kakuzu thought as he dodged Yugo who under the influence of his transformation had turned his right arm into a massive axe blade to strike. Naruto flew at him and held his hands out catching Kakuzu's arms in his psychic hold and forcibly ripped them off only to see the tendrils underneath him, okay that's disgusting. Naruto admitted. Ugh. Karen gagged. You may have tossed Deidara around, but I will not be so easily beaten. Kakuzu made his tendrils fly at Naruto trying to grab him, but the boy was too fast for the tendrils to catch him. Are all you Akatsuki members this full of yourselves? Naruto asked as he floated above Kakuzu. Kakuzu growled as he fired a blast of wind at Naruto blowing him back but regained altitude, don't tell me that's all you got. Kakuzu. Haydn called as his head was being crushed into the ground by Suijetsu's foot, get your ass over here and put me back together. Haydn. Shut up. Kakuzu screamed in agitation. You shouldn't argue when I'm right here. Naruto called as he flew at Kakuzu with an Utama Rasengan and nailed Kakuzu once again. The force was so big it ended up destroying his Rantun heart. Damn it, only two hearts left. Kakuzu cursed, if this keeps up I'll be dead for sure, he noticed Haydn's state, and he's pretty much useless in this state. He suddenly jumped away before Yujito could land a blow. Sorry to but this short, but I'll come back for you another time Jinchuriki. Kakuzu promised Yujito as he launched a Sweitan Jutsu at them to confuse them long enough for him to make his escape. Damn it! Naruto shouted. He got away. Karen grunted in frustration. Hey at least we got one of them. Suijetsu reminded them as he still had his foot on Haydn's head. Get your damn foot off me. He cursed. Naruto approached Haydn and levitated his head up to him, you I can make of good use for now, he smirked as Haydn spat at Naruto's face, disgusting. He said as he used his psychic to throw Haydn's head into a wall. Oh shit. Haydn cursed from the painful impact. Naruto cleaned the spit off his face and looked at Yujito, are you okay? I'll be fine, she answered, but you're going to have to fill me in on these three. She motioned to his team. Meet my new team, Yujito, he said as she looked at the three who waved casually, how did you wind up running into Akatsuki? I was out on a regular mission and when I was heading back I ran into them. I thought I could take them on my own, but they proved to be formidable opponents. She explained. Good thing you softened them up for us. Naruto said making Yujito blush at his compliment. Hey I'm all for being relieved the fight's over, but can we get out of here? Karen asked. Naruto nodded as he flew them up off the ground heading back for the tunnel as Haydn shouted, Hey bring the rest of my body damn it. Sorry but your head's all I need. Naruto answered while they flew out of the tunnel and were outside the mines. Okay so we stopped the Akatsuki so what do we do now? Suijetsu asked. Naruto spoke, I know exactly what to do. Yujito I wish to see the Raikagi. What? 
The group shouted. Naruto, what are you saying? Yujito gasped. The Akatsuki have attacked you, and if they continue to pursue us they'll eventually target B and Kumo. If we don't inform the Raika Gi of the dangers then your village will only be put in jeopardy. You're talking about trying to reason with a Kagi, Naruto. Karen reminded him. As far as everything's concerned I don't give a damn about who I'm trying to reason with because these Akatsuki goons are out of control. Yujito here's my friend and so is Kumo's other Jinchuriki, B. I'll be damned if I don't do something about them even if it means trying to get the other nations to see reason. Yujito was taken aback by Naruto's speech and smiled, very well, I'll take you to Kumo, however be prepared for whatever harsh lectures and speeches the Raika Gi will give you. I'll be ready. Naruto answered. Then follow me. Yujito said as they started heading for Kumo on foot while carrying Haydn's severed head. Soon they were coming up on the village of Kumo. As they approached the gates two guards stopped them, halt, state your business. It's okay, bear with me. They wish to see the Raika Gi. Yujito explained. Yujito-san, we cannot permit outsiders to enter without proper authorization. The guard explained. I understand, but leave them to me. If they try anything fresh I'll take responsibility and put them in their place. She smirked at Naruto and his group. The two guards looked at each other and sighed, very well, but if the Raika Gi gets in a bad mood don't say we didn't warn you. I understand. She nodded and they were allowed passage. As Suijetsu walked past them he noted how stiff they were standing like near emotionless guards, hey guys. At ease. He joked only for Karen to grab him by the ear and drag him along before he made them mad. As Yujito led the four through Kumo, they were spotted by whom else but B, Karui, Omoi, and Samui, Naruto. They called. Naruto turned and saw the four approach them, oh hey guys. This is quite a surprise. Samui admitted. What are you doing here? Omoi asked. And who are they? Karui motioned to the other three. Some new friends of mine, he answered, sorry we can't stop right now, but I have business with the Raika Gi. What? Karui and Omoi cried. You're going to see our village leader? Omoi asked. And why? Samui asked in concern. Yujito was attacked by Akatsuki, and I want the Raika Gi to know of them and their objective. Naruto explained. Yo, you'll need me for support if you're gonna talk to my bro. Be wrapped. Very well. Naruto said as he followed them with Samui dragging her teammates along with her much to their fright. When Yujito led them into the administration building, they stood before a young woman at a desk, Yujito, welcome back. Oh, and who are they? She motioned to the other four outside B and his team. Some visitors who require meeting with the Raika Gi. Yujito answered. Oh, I see. She said in a bit of worry. Who's this? Suijetsu asked Omoi and Samui. This is Mabui, she's the Raika Gi's assistant. Omoi introduced them. A pleasure, Mabui-san. Naruto greeted her with a smile making her blush a bit. Yes, well follow me please. She said reluctantly showing them to the Raika Gi's office. Mabui knocked until a tough and gruff voice was heard, come in. Mabui opened the door as they looked in seeing the dark-skinned muscle-bound Raika Gi or his real name, uplifting dumbbells. Naruto and his team were in shock to see the guy was so muscle-bound, holy shit, that guy must take a lot of steroids. Naruto thought. Raika Gi-sama, Yujito Ni has returned from her mission. Mabui explained. And I've brought guests with me. The Jinchuriki added. Guests. A asked in confusion as he looked over seeing Naruto and his team with B, Yujito, and Samui at their sides while Omoi and Karui were cowering behind them, Yujito. You know better than to let outsiders into our village without my authorization. He bellowed making Karen's eyes widen in fright while Suijetsu backed away from his towering form. I understand that Raika Gi-sama, but there is a matter of importance that needs to be addressed by this young man, and I implore you to listen to reason. Yujito pleaded. 
A's gaze turned to Naruto who stood there with a direct focus in his eyes showing no ounce of fear at the Kagi, state your name. He ordered. Naruto, sir. Naruto. Just that. No I have a last name, but I don't think I should tell you just yet or even at all. He answered making Karui and Omoi scared. A frown, you'd better watch how you talk to me, boy. Now what is it you want? Well my friends Yugo, Suijetsu, Karen, and I were aimlessly wandering around this side of the land when we happened to find Yujito in the middle of a battle. A battle? A asked turning to Yujito who spoke. Yes sir, two nuke nin attacked me. They were unlike any nuke nin I've ever faced before. Were they now? Across his arms. Yes, they were members of the Akatsuki Organization B and I told you about a while back. She answered. Akatsuki. That again? A asked in skepticism. They're real and I fought them. Yujito argued. And we got proof in here. Suijetsu said holding up a bag and dumped out Haydn's severed head shocking A and Mabui. Ouch. Damn it. Haydn cursed. Mabui, Karui, and Omoi shrieked hearing words coming out of the head as a spoke, what the hell is that? Naruto picked Haydn's head up by his hair and showed him, this is Haydn and Nukneen from Yugikure. Why is he alive? Karui asked in fright. Because Haydn here found a method of immortality through a cult's ritual that worships a deity known as Jashin. Naruto explained his knowledge of Haydn through the bingo book. And why did you bring this here? A asked wanting an explanation. Since you seem to be skeptical of the Akatsuki perhaps I should have this one explain things, Naruto said as he placed the head on a pedestal in the office so everyone could see it, all right Haydn, be a good head and tell the Raikagi what your organization is after. Go to hell you little shit. Haydn cursed. Looks like getting him to talk won't be easy. Omoi said still creeped out by the living severed head. That's where you're wrong, Naruto smirked, it's time to play dentist. He used his powers and plucked a tooth out of Haydn's mouth making him cry in pain as blood flowed out from where his tooth was. How did you do that? A gasped seeing he didn't even touch the head. I'm full of surprises, he answered and looked back at Haydn, now Haydn, every time you act stubborn I'm going to keep plucking your teeth out. I'll never tell you. Haydn spat. Wrong answer. He used his psychic to pluck another tooth making him cry some more as blood poured out of his new empty socket. Omoi and Karui cringed while watching Naruto's brutal torture method while they watched in amusement wondering how this boy was doing it. Haydn continued to be stubborn forcing Naruto to pluck some more teeth. Soon enough Haydn couldn't take any more pain from his teeth being ripped out and the blood he was losing through his gums. Alright I'll talk. Naruto smirked, was that so hard? Now tell the Raika Gi exactly what you Akatsuki folk want. The Bijou. We're after the Nine Bijou. I was tasked to track down Yujito Ni and deliver her to my superior until this asshole and his band of flunkies showed up and ruined everything. Hey who are you calling flunkies? Karen shouted but was ignored. Why do you wish to acquire the Nine Bijou? A asked glaring at the head. I really don't know the full details. Truth is I was one of the newest members to ever join and our leader is very secretive. Haydn explained. Who is your leader? Naruto asked. Pain. His name is Pain, but that's all I know really. He cried while Naruto kept it to himself realizing Itachi was correct about how no one else in the Akatsuki besides himself knew that Pain wasn't the real leader, but said nothing. So as you can see Raika Gisama, if this one was after me, then they could very well target B as well. Yujito said as B nodded. A pondered on this before turning to Naruto and spoke, Naruto was it. Tell me more. As you wish, Naruto said as he bagged Haydn's head again, I was in fact the one who informed Yujito and B of the Akatsuki some time ago. You. That's right. I had a run-in with these guys a while back. I got to say you got some fine shinobi in your ranks. He smirked at the girls who blushed while Karui turned her head not wanting her blush to be seen. And how do you know about the Akatsuki so much? 
The Rika Gi asked suspiciously. Because I am also a target. Naruto answered. You are. Then that would make you. A Jinchuriki like us. B said on behalf of Naruto, Yujito, and himself. And what do you hold? A asked Naruto. I hold number 9, the one above Octopops here. He motioned to B. Hmm, if you hold the QB inside you, then you must be a shinobi of Kanoha. A deduced. Now how do you figure that? Naruto crossed his arms wondering how. Come now, even we of Kumo know of the dreaded attack on Kanoha 16 years ago. The only way to defeat a bijou is to seal it inside a host. So naturally it'd be logical someone from Kanoha would be the Jinchuriki for the Kyubi. A explained. Flawless logic, however there is a bump in your theory. Naruto put in. What do you mean? I'm not of Kanoha, not anymore. Not anymore. I was confused. No. They threw me out in favor of someone who did jack squat for the village. The redhead answered. I don't understand. Well you know of the Uchiha clan? Naruto asked as the Raikagi nodded in confirmation, well the youngest survivor was someone I thought to be my ally, but it turned out he was nothing more than a selfish dog hungry for power and would betray his own village to fulfill his selfish desires. I was sent to stop him and succeeded, but the Dan Council and civilians favored the Uchiha over me because of their own stupidity and voted against our Hoka Gi to have me banished. I see. A pondered. I've been living on my own three years adapting outside the sanctity of my village just to survive. When I knew of the Akatsuki I knew I had to get stronger for one day they would come after me. I barely had anyone to teach me but I still trained for the sake of my survival and to keep the organization from taking so many lives to fulfill their own selfish goals. However during my travels I found people who cared about me. Who treated me like I was one of their own. I found out I was never meant for Kanoha, I was meant to become a shinobi who doesn't take orders. During my travels I then decided that I would one day form my own nation a nation that would not be corrupted by those obsessed with power or pride, but so long as the Akatsuki are after me and the other Jinchuriki it will not be easily accomplished. Your point. A asked wanting him to get on with it. I request an alliance from you and your village, Raika Gisama. Naruto flat out said it. An alliance? That's right, Naruto answered, you may not see it, but the Akatsuki are not just one nation's enemy but they're every nation's enemy. In fact they're already on the move. They already acquired the Achibi from Suna and now they made an attempt to take Yujito who has the Nibi, and it'll eventually lead up to them gunning down B to take the Hachibi from him. And why do you care so much for another nation's Jinchuriki? A asked curiously. Because we Jinchuriki share a bond of pain only we can understand. Everyone we've met looked down on our existence. Looked at us like we were monsters. Never given a chance of acceptance for something we had no control over or even asked to be a part of. We may be Jinchuriki to you and every single civilian out there, but we're more than anyone ever gives us credit for. Yujito and B listened knowing that's exactly how they started out. Though hearing Yujito's and B's stories they have proven to your village to be more than Jinchuriki. They're regarded as heroes. I never had that chance in my village, but outside it I've become welcomed, and I'll be damned if I let the Akatsuki and their sick ambitions take what I worked hard for away from me. I know you must care about your brother B and your village like a Kagi should, and know you'd feel lousy if the Akatsuki took either one away from you. B looked at his brother who was taking everything the boy was saying to heart and not even having time to make a comeback against the boy's argue. And unlike that incident with the huge EA clan all those years ago, I don't want to form this alliance to milk your village for all its service. I want us all to be safe and live in a world free from tyrants like the Akatsuki organization, because if they succeed in capturing all of the nine biju then I feel we'd all lose everything, our loved ones, our people, all those who mean anything to you. There was a moment of silence as Naruto saw the Raika Gi wasn't saying anything. Taking that as a sign he wasn't going to listen he sighed, I'm sorry to have troubled you, Raika Gi-sama. My team and I will be on my way and will never come back. He turned around and started walking until they spoke up. 
Wait. Naruto froze and turned back around seeing her with a look of remorse and guilt on his face, your words have not fallen upon a heart of stone. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life that haunt me to this day. It may have been to keep my pride up or because I was selfish. Either way I won't deny I haven't made mistakes, but you were right about me in one field. I do care about my village, my people, and especially my brother. In fact I once met someone who you remind me a lot of, who helped me realize that B was more than just a Jinchuriki. A flashback many years ago when he and a scout troop he was leading that included B were in a fight with Minato Nami Kazi. A and Minato fought hard with Minato's Hiration technique making him match up against the Raika Gi's speed and strength. You're a powerful one I'll say that. Minato complimented A. You fight like a true Kagi yourself, but what makes someone like you so strong? A asked Minato. Minato smirked, it's because I fight for what I believe in, my village, and my loved ones. That guy back there you say is your bro. I can tell he's a Jinchuriki. But let me ask you this. Is he just some tool to you like all Jinchuriki are said to be? What do you mean? Just answer me, what is he to you? A pondered as he recalled all he's been through with his brother and knowing he's a Jinchuriki finally answered, he's my brother. Minato smiled, and you make sure he knows that before he endures what cruel life awaits him. After all it's important to keep those you hold dear close to you, otherwise you'll end up losing them. He finished who had no idea he would end up losing the two people that would be so close to him. I've always been known to be stubborn even when I was a boy, although some say I got that from my father, which I won't deny. As a village leader it is my job to look after my village, my people, and my loved ones. If you hadn't showed up when you did Yujito would have probably have been in worse danger than she was. For that I am grateful. And since you've confirmed my brother's words about the Akatsuki with this evidence you've convinced me that the Akatsuki are a danger to us all. For that I will accept your request of an alliance. The Kumo Shinobi, Mabui, and Naruto's team were surprised at this as Naruto spoke, Arigato, Raikagi-sama. I assure you you're making the right choice. So what village do you intend on making? He asked curiously. I'm going to rebuild it atop the grounds of the former land of Yuzushiogakure and make it my own Yuzushio. I see, A said and asked, though why would you choose that land? Because it feels like a second home to me. Naruto answered. Then would that make you? A began but was cut off. Like I said, it's like a second home and leave it at that. Naruto replied wanting it to be dropped. I decided to let it be and spoke, very well, and as thanks for helping rescue one of our village's top kanoichi I welcome you to stay the night here in our village for the night. This isn't one of your attempts to bait us with good will only to kill us in the night is it? Suijetsu asked only for Karen to stomp on his foot, O.W. You should be grateful. Karen scolded him while Karen raised a brow at how she was handling her teammate. I think I could get along well with this one. She smirked while Omoi cringed not liking the idea of a second Karui. Arigato for your generous offer, Raika Gisama. Naruto bowed his head as Yugo, Karen, and Suijetsu did the same. B, will you and your team kindly show Naruto and his team around the village? A requested. You bet bro. Come on fellas let's get on with the show. B rapped as he and his group showed Naruto and his team out of the building as they watched them leave with Mabui looking confused. Forgive me for saying this sir, but I've never seen this side of you before. A smiled at his assistant and answered, let's just say this boy's words have dug deeper than a kunai into flesh for me. Meanwhile in a dark cave Kakuzu still with his body badly beaten, stood before the Akatsuki's other members using the apparition technique, so you let the Jinchuriki escape and left Haydn behind. Payne asked in disappointment. My apologies, Kakuzu began, I did not expect the Jinchuriki Naruto Uzumaki to show up. Again. Daidara called. How does he do it? Kisame asked in shock while Itachi remained silent. I don't know, but he wasn't alone. He had others with him. Kakuzu explained. Others? Payne asked. Yes, one of them I overheard telling Haydn about the Seven Swordsmen and that he was a Hozuki. 
What? Kisame gasped, Ahuzuki. Then it can only be little Suijetsu. He was such a cute kid, especially when he would execute his victims. So now he's not traveling alone? Daidara asked. It appears that way, the second was who I recall from Oro Kamaru was bipolar Yugo. Kakuzu added. Great dealing the one boy was problems enough, now the Nibi Jinchuriki is still out there and we've lost another follower. Daidara sighed. Kakuzu I want you to go back and acquire the Nibi Jinchuriki. Pain ordered. And I will, but right now I must acquire three new hearts to replace my missing ones. Plus I feel like going on a little bounty hunting while I'm at it. Hey. Why should you be allowed to slack off while the rest of us work? Daydara argued until Payne spoke. Daydara, silence. Daydara huffed. I assure you if I ever see that boy again I will make him suffer. Kakuzu assured his fellow members. Try not to make him suffer too much, we do need him after all. Conan reminded him. Very well let's all go. Pain ordered as the apparitions vanished leaving Kakuzu to himself who left the cave. That night, Naruto and his group were welcomed to stay at Yujido's place which was big enough for them. Naruto, Karen, Yugo, and Suijetsu were given their own guest rooms. In Naruto's room the redhead boy was lying on his bed relaxing, I never thought I'd actually be here in Kumo. Yeah surprised they haven't already tried to capture you. Kurama thought to him. I know. I was afraid I was going to have go all out on the Raikagi if he tried to attack me himself. I guess I really did manage to break through the Raikagi's stubbornness. All I needed was the right words. And look at you having more support from three of the five great nations. What next you gonna try and get IWA to join you and your cause? They'd probably want to die then join forces with someone who's related to the Yan Dai Meho Kagi. Good point. Naruto hearing a knock at his door spoke, who is it? It's us Naruto. Yujito said. Can we come in? Samui's voice was also heard. Uh, sure, he answered as the two blonde buxom Kanoichi and Karui entered, hey girls, what's up? We were just wondering how you were doing. Karui said. I'm doing fantastic, and I appreciated the tour of Kumo. This place really is full of excitement. With B around it's always wild. Samui answered. Though be glad he didn't invite you to Turtle Island. Karui said. To where? Naruto asked in confusion. It's nothing. Yujito answered as the three got on the bed. So what do you three think of my new team? Naruto asked curiously. Quite a cool bunch, I think. Samui admitted. That Suijetsu is quite the joker, Yujito added, while Yugo seems to be a bit of the quiet type. Well Yugo's had a rough life so I'm helping him get back on a good road in life. Naruto explained. And that Karen, she sure knows how to keep Suijetsu in line. Karui admitted with a smirk. Just like how you know to keep Omoi in line if he overthinks things. Naruto added making her smile and nod, so is there any real reason why all three of you came here to see me this late? Naruto smirked. Well it's been a while since we saw you, and we were thinking about catching up. Samui said. I see and would that include, he raised his brows a few times. Well we never got a chance to last time. Karui said while blushing a bit. You girls sure you wanna try it with me? After all if it's your first time it should be with someone special. He warned them. But you are special to us, Naruto. Yujito said. Naruto smiled, and you girls are special to me. So then would be interested. Samui asked preparing to undress. If you three are. He answered and they smiled. Lemon happened. After a few hours of intense pleasure Naruto was laying on the bed with all three of the girls draping over him, I can't believe it took us this long just to get it all out of you. Yujito panted. I don't think I've ever enjoyed anything as much as this before in my life. Karui panted as she laid her head into his chest. This was a super cool round, Naruto. Samui added as she pressed her breasts into his shoulder. 
I thank you three for allowing me to do this with you. He replied. It was our pleasure, Karui began before scowling at him, but slap my ass that hard again and I'll slap your face. Okay. Naruto winced as she smiled again. Good boy. She said giving him a kiss followed by Yujito and Samui. Soon the four fell asleep while Naruto thanked the cosmos for being blessed with such luck. When morning came, Naruto, Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo were standing outside the village gates as A, B, Karui, Omoi, Samui, and Yujito stood to see them off. Well we'll be seeing you all around. Naruto said. Good luck on your journey. Omoi said. And be careful out there. Yujito said as she hugged Naruto. Always. He answered. Come back again whenever you can. Karui added. You can count on that. Suijetsu replied. And if you hear about anything more from the Akatsuki let us know. Yugo said. We will, A nodded and turned to Naruto, I hope one day your village will rise high with you as an effective leader, Naruto. Arigato, Raika Gisama. Naruto said as he and the giant of a man shook on it before the group walked off with Raika Gi smiling. Minato Nami Kazi, that boy is definitely yours. He thought. As Naruto and his group made it far enough from the village Karen spoke, so where to now, Naruto? Well I'm gonna dump Haydn's head in the ocean for one thing and hope some giant mammal swallows him, and I did say we'd go to the sea country and check on Isaribi, so that's still on my itinerary. So then fly us out there. Suijetsu said. Hold on. I wanna stop and collect some supplies, and I found a better way to fly you guys there without having to worry about dropping you by trying to fly freestyle. What do you have in mind? Yugo asked as Naruto smirked. You'll see. Chapter End Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.